Good morning. It's great to be here. Um, as you know, my husband, Saeed Abedini, is serving an eight-year sentence in Iran's um, notorious Evan prison, which is one of the worst prisons actually in the world. He's been tortured and abused and um, forced to, re um, he was, he's been asked and uh, tortured to deny his Christian faith and return to Islam. And he has not. They've, uh, they've told him many times that they would free him and allow him to return to our family, the kids and I, if he would deny his Christian faith. And he stood strong in that prison. He's led many, many, over 30 people to Christ in that prison. And he, um, he's endured um, a lot, of, an intense time in that prison. He's been taken to solitary twice because they, in an attempt to break him and have him deny his Christian faith. And the kids and I desperately want him back, but we're proud that over us, he's chosen Christ. Even over coming back to us, he's chosen to stand up for his faith, and not only stand up for his faith, but to proclaim the gospel in that dark prison and bring hope where many of those people are on death row, have long-term uh, imprisonments. And for them, for me to know that so many of them now know Christ, it, it makes it worth it. I know his imprisonment is not in vain. I wanted to share something quick with you about my testimony. When I heard about his um, imprisonment, I got a call in the middle of the night, and my nightmare, in a way, started. My whole world was taken from me. Um, our, my future, my best friend, my husband, my uh, the ki uh, fathers to my kids, and my whole future, finances and uh, dreams and everything was taken from me. And I'd always feared what would happen if I lost someone or if I would go through an intense trial, if I would question God and His goodness. And I reached a, a deep, dark time of despair. And I reached out to Jesus. And I've known Him since I was nine. But I found the most, um, I connected to Him in such a deep way that not only did I not question His goodness, I proclaim His goodness and how awesome he is. And I got to drink of his goodness. And he gave me strength to stand up. And he's given me joy and peace. I've had atheists and Muslims come up to me and say, there's something, there has to be something real about your God. Because you, you, this is not possible for you to stand up and have so much peace and joy and to be able to give it to us. And you know, the world crumbles under pressure. But we um, not only survive it, but we uh, thrive. Because only pressure allows us to even connect deeper with God, Almighty God. We have that. No religion has that. Only Jesus Christ has that. And under pressure, we are broken and we realize our weakness. And we can connect to God. And we can receive even more joy and peace. And the world doesn't understand it. And the world needs to see that in us. They need to see our, our passionate walk and relationship and love story with Christ. And... Um, you know, I, I would always be confused by something uh, Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. He would say, I take pleasure in my infirmities and in my weakness and my, you know, um, distress. And how, why does he take pleasure? It, the Lord opened it up for me during this time because he realizes how weak he is and he discovers the strength of Christ. And I just want to end with this. I want to say, you know, in this trial, I've, found, I've tasted a new um, intimacy. I've, I've reached a new intimacy with Christ that I pray that our nation and uh, us as Christians would discover His goodness because the world needs to see our relationship and our fire, our, our, the truth of Jesus Christ. We can't be preaching it. We have to be living it. And in order to reach the gospel, ha we have to experience it first. And, you know, I have to say that when He brought me out of this darkness, He's allowed me to preach over in, uh, in front of over a hundred nations. I, you know, I was present in uh, June, um, and I was, I was speaking in front of the U United Nations in Geneva, and over 196 countries are, are, are there, and I got to tell them that Jesus Christ is the way to God, and He's the God of peace they're looking for. And you know, Said and I had always dreamed to uh, reach millions of Muslims for Christ. I got to do that. I got to go in um, media like BBC Farsi and Voice of America Persia that broadcast into Iran. Over 50 million Iranians got to hear me on live TV as they were watching to tell them about Jesus Christ. And so I praise God for that. that
I don't have a ministry. I'm just the girl who loves Jesus. At age nine, I asked the Lord. I, I was reading Psalms 2, and I, I asked the Lord um, for the nations. In Psalms 2, it says, Today I've begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. I pray that tonight, today, the Lord would awaken your desire to ask for, you, for nations for your inheritance, that you would be not lukewarm, but you would be on fire for the living God, and you would go out and ask. I would ask when I was nine. I would say, Lord, give me the nation of Iran for my inheritance. I want it. I didn't see it till this year that I got to speak to millions of Iranians. I've led so many Muslims to Christ. I've Said and I had led, have led hundreds and hundreds of Muslims to Christ, and to see that become a reality, I pray that you would ask the nations as your inheritance. God bless you.